Issues 1. Whether illegitimate children have rights to inherit inheritance under the laws of intestacy in Malaysia? And 2. What are the considerations on the removal of an administrator of the estate of the deceased? These are the facts. Two civil suits, suit 1 and suit 2, were heard together at the High Court in relation to the estate of Tan Ka Yong, who died intestate, leaving behind a wife and two daughters. Suit 1 involved an action taken by one of the administrators of the estate to remove the other administrator and become the sole administrator. Suit 2 was initiated by two companies to recover certain sums from the administrators of the deceased's estate. Both suits arose following the death of the deceased who had died intestate, leaving behind a wife, a daughter from the marriage, and another daughter from a previous relationship. The marriage between the deceased and his wife was registered, while the relationship with the other daughter's mother was only a Chinese customary marriage, which was under challenge. The High Court decided that the other daughter was an illegitimate child and, as such, was not entitled to inherit under the Distribution Act 1958. DA. The High Court also found it was just to remove one of the administrators of the estate. The Court of Appeal upheld both decisions, and the appeal was about the right of illegitimate children to inherit under the laws of intestacy in this country. The decision, allowing the appeal. Section 17A of the Interpretation Act 1948 and 1967 gives precedence to the purposive rule of construction over the literal rule of construction when interpreting statutes. This means that the court should prioritize a construction that promotes the purpose, object or intent of the legislation, even if it differs from the literal interpretation of the words used in the statute. The purposive approach should be used even if there is no ambiguity in the statute's language. The purpose of the DA was to distribute the deceased's estate among those who survived the deceased, in accordance with the order of succession set out in Section 6. The term issue was used in Section 6 rather than the term child. The court's decisions in the case in question seemed to treat the terms child and issue as interchangeable, but this was incorrect as they are separately defined in Section 3 of the Act. Ascribing the definition of child to issue without more would render the definition of issue redundant. Thus, it was improper to use the definition of child to interpret the term issue when the term child did not even appear in Section 6. The term issue in relation to the deceased suggested descendants by blood lineage, not dependent on the matter of legitimacy of the descendant. The definition of issue in Section 3 sought to extend the generational lineage to beyond the immediate persons who might properly be counted as issue, to the offspring or grandchildren, even if the immediate parents of such grandchildren were themselves deceased. The intent in using the word issue as opposed to children in Section 6 was obviously to expand or enlarge the category of persons who might succeed or inherit, consonant with the purpose of the DA. The court found that the second appellant, who was the deceased's illegitimate daughter, fell within the meaning of the term issue in the distribution of the deceased's estate according to the order of succession as set out in Section 6 of the DA. The term issue was clear and referred to descendants by blood lineage, not dependent on the matter of legitimacy. Therefore, the appellant was entitled to succeed and inherit under Section 6. This interpretation complied with equality guaranteed in the federal constitution and promoted the welfare of the appellant. Succumbing to the respondent's arguments would strain the intent and meaning of the provisions, including that of the definition of child in Section 3. The court found that there was evidence of a Chinese customary marriage between the deceased and Liu Yen Lu, but it was unclear whether the marriage complied with the Law Reform, Marriage and Divorce, Act 1976. If the marriage was void due to non-compliance with the Act, the child of the marriage would still be considered legitimate if the parties reasonably believed the marriage was valid at the time. Therefore. The second appellant was considered a legitimate child entitled to inherit under her late father's estate. The first appellant was not to be removed, as there was no sufficient cause for it. In considering the removal of an appointment, the welfare and interests of all beneficiaries should be taken into account. The High Court failed to consider the welfare of other beneficiaries, and made erroneous orders for the sale of the family home.
To know more, 